Welcome, everybody, to the Unnamed Production Company. We are continuing our Trouble at Basin Peak basic fantasy adventure. So I am very, very excited for that. You can catch the first episode of that um, on the YouTube channel. It is edited and split into two parts. Um, so obviously, part one and part two uh are of session one and this is officially session two so to avoid any confusion we'll make sure the naming is all good um but in this session we if you watch the last one you will notice that our human fighter jeremy is gone um and we have caleb joining playing kordak the dwarf with this uh these two elves who may or may not enjoy dwarves we'll see with that i'm gonna kick it over to nate and we'll get this party started so we faded out the camera last time with our group uh looking at and maybe inspecting this uh there were three objects in this side room there was a large collar a large leash and then a huge dagger with what would appear to be uh large bits of food rotting on the blade the camera kind of pulls out from there and we get kind of what we would consider a flashback moment. And we see uh, this dwarven man, a, a man of the church, traveling with a group of fishermen. Um, he is a, a dwarf from Basin Peak who is going with this group of fishermen to investigate kind of what's been going on. You know, I can help heal. I can help uh, see what's going on here. So he goes and the party gets absolutely ambushed by a group of bugbears. Um, the, the fishermen quickly get skewered and they get pulled apart and completely ravaged. Uh, the bugbears steal their nets and um, there is Kordak standing amongst three bugbears. Kordak, roll initiative. Three. <laughs> Two. So you get to act first. You have three uh, bugbears standing, uh, all with scimitars, one with a net in his hand, standing in front of you. What do you do? All right. I will start... In Dwarven, I'm going to start casting a spell. Basta, doom, sta, da, to, da! And um, that was Pause Fear. Okay, uh, so they have to make a. 124 radius, a one target. Dwarven okay, speech, no, they but... definitely failed. Is it an area of effect spell? Uh, yes, but it only hits one target, so. One target. So, whatever one, of the one goes, right in front of me, he uh, flees, he becomes frightened and flees for two turns. Yeah, he bolts. He's gone. All right, and then I hold up. I don't have a shield. I hold up my mace. And I go, <laughs> come and get some. Yeah, the other two will begin to. Uh, the one will begin to circle back around you, and the other charges in for an attack. Does a oh, he gets a twenty. So yes, he hits. Yeah. Um, he is going to deal you six points of slashing damage, and the other one coming up behind you also gets a 20. I love these new dice. They're amazing. Um, I don't love them. <laughs> uh, he will hit you for four points of uh, slashing damage. Uh, so the first one runs up to you and just uh, slashes across your shoulder. You barely manage to step out of the way, but you get caught on that shoulder, backing up into the bugbear who uh, is just behind you, and he will uh, slash down across your back, opening a, a, a wound across your back. Uh, what type of armor is Kordak wearing? I have chainmail. Okay, so it actually will glance off the chainmail and drag down your back, but then catch the top of your uh, your quarter, your hind quarters, and drag down your thigh a little bit, uh, injuring that leg. Uh, you're up. Ugh, lucky shot. So I'll go for the one right in front of me. I'll just take the mace and swing. Okay. Since I don't have any... Yeah. Oh, hey. All right. Not not a net 20, but 20. All right, yep. You uh, smash into him with your mace. Go ahead and roll right. damage. <laughs> For two damage. <laughs> okay, yeah. You, uh, you I rolled a one there. Balance. Uh, you hit him in the shoulder, and it crushes. You hear a little bit of bone crunching, and he uh, is none too happy about that. He will uh, repost. Not enough. With, uh, with his... Scimitar attempting to skewer you. Uh, he'll, however, uh, miss. You'll definitely dodge out of the way. 
And it is at that point uh, that you miss that the other bugbear behind you, um, he's repositioned himself behind you. He grabs your neck and he smashes you on the top of the head with uh, the hilt of his sword and it goes black. Kordak, you wake up in a camp in the middle of the woods. Uh, you're not exactly sure how far away from Basin Peak you are. Um, there is a staunch smell of cooking meat. It's not necessarily smelling very good. Um, and as your eyes adjust and you wake up, you realize you are uh, hogtied and laying on the ground. Um, the devil is this? Your hands and legs are tied to a long wooden pole. Uh, and as you look up, you see the embers of flame going up into the night sky, but then you see a large, large creature uh, sitting on a on a tree stump, um, or at rather, a tree that has been felled, he's using as a small bench for him. Uh, and he has a deer carcass in one hand, just kind of tearing into the flesh, uh, eating it. Uh, you black out again, and we go back over to our friends in the cave. Uh, what are you three doing uh, as you look at these items in the room before you? I think that I would be kind of looking around, and it, like, is there any any um, like torches or any kind of light? shining in or or are we kind of your just, sword yeah yeah okay just yeah just my sword all right yep and uh so i think i would hold it aloft and i would say something along the line you know in my normal obnoxious way like um you know the lord of light has provided for us look at this bounty and then i would uh i would turn to um Findeli and i would say i i I won't go so far as to cast a blessing on this room this time, but perhaps you could look around and see if this was tainted by the same curse or evil gods that that other room was. Yes, of course. Uh, I'll, I'll search the room. Uh, well, in this case, I guess... How did I do it last time? Did I sense it out, or...? Um, just roll a 1d6 on a search and for, wait, I think it's only for looking for doors that elves get and to get, a yeah, a mm -hmm. bonus. So yeah, so just a 1d6. I got a four. Okay. Um, you find nothing else in the room of particular interest. Uh, what you do find is, as you are looking around, you look back and you see Jeremy just kind of holding up this, uh, leash and collar to be like, wait a minute. Did we just kill somebody's pet? Hmm. It would seem that way. Huh. That's... It says... Problematic. Only were ogres keep stuff like this as pets. <laughs> and I would immediately look over to Findeli like... Where? No. 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 There's no such oh. thing as were ogres. Come on. Uh, but regardless says, of whether there is or isn't, we should leave. <laughs> Quickly. I agree. I, I do believe that we have solved Basin Peak's fish problem. Mm -hmm. At least as far as we know. And uh, yes, I do suspect that if we stay here long, whoever owned that collar may return. Finn, as you're searching sure. about, of the three things that you had noticed was that dagger. Do you um, look at it, or are you uninterested in it? I would, I would like to look at it. Yeah, you're getting a, a magical sense from that, from that dagger. It was a very sure. large dagger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's almost the size of a short sword. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have identify anything. Is there? Can I identify without the spell or? Um, I'm not sure how it looks know, like yes, you know that it is at least a dagger plus one, but there's something else about it that you can't quite put your finger on. Make an intelligence roll. Sure. Please. Okay. Intelligence roll. I got a twelve. Twelve. Unfortunately, um, you were looking for a fourteen. Um, you're not quite sure. Uh, mm -hmm. What you can wait. 
what else is magical about it. But you know that there's something more than it just being a plus one dagger. It's, it's counted as a dagger, though, yeah? Um, a light weapon. Yeah, small. Okay, because I can use daggers. Uh, and I'm the only one who hasn't got a magic weapon. So Findelis is going to just put that right in his pocket. I mean, some yeah. might say that you you have quite a few magic weapons, but I suppose <laughs> it, it's a matter of semantics. <laughs> Um, Jeremy has left the room. Uh, he, uh, you hear him uh, out by where the owl bear was at. Well, no, he needs light, so he wouldn't have left Iyer's side. But he he comes over to you, Iyer, and he says, "Hey, uh, so I was thinking maybe you could help me. I really want to remove that that creature that we just killed. I want to take its paw." As proof, I want to take that back to town and show everybody. I was like, yeah, sure. What? Why do you need my help? You got a blade, don't you? He holds up the big maul that he's got. He says, oh, wait, he's got his axes. Yeah, I was going to say, I was that's like, right. yeah, it's like, what kind of fighter comes yeah. prepared with only one blade? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, he's like, yeah, I just can't see shit in the dark. All right, well, let's go. And I walk over and kind of hold my sword up so he can see. Yeah, and he'll uh, he'll take his axe and <laughs> at this point the uh, the owl bear carcass has kind of burnt down to a smoldering embers and everything. Uh, and he'll he'll take the whole paw and plop it in his backpack. So he's got an owl bear paw with these huge talons uh, that want to be claws but aren't quite. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fendeli's gonna walk up to since he sees you guys cutting up the the owl bear. I'm going to strip like a section of it and uh, cut out some chunks and start feeding it to uh, uh, my newfound uh, animal companion here. Uh, since I just realized we have dogs. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, uh, so I feed him some, you know, I pat him. I try to get, you know, the relationship a little bit better. I also cut a whole bunch more pieces and I just have like a little meat sack for the road. Absolutely. Um, Sam and Sam, or Iyer and Findelli, give your both of your dogs, I'm assuming you're going to feed them, uh, give them plus one maximum HP. Okay. I may Eat have magical f- owlbear meat. forgotten to write down my dog's <laughs> HP. Or at least um, I can't find it. I think for yours it. it was either seven or eight. Yeah. So yeah. just make it eight. All right. Cool. Um... Yeah, and you guys are all ecstatic. Uh, you, you've you solved the town's crisis, and you are out of there. You're beaten feet, and um, Jeremy seems the most excited of all, because, and, and he is going on while he is hacking this this paw off. He is going on and on about like how, and he's kind of talking to himself. He's like, nobody ever believed me. Nobody ever believed me. Now I can prove to them that there are these kind of creatures out here in the world. This is, oh, this is the best and he's just he, and he he's so excited and he leads the way um, out of the cave uh, he forgets about the wire trap in the first room he triggers it and he is crushed by a huge three falling rocks from the ceiling they just come down at this mo- in this moment and they and they completely bury him uh, well I shouldn't say they bury him they cu- they crush him utterly um, and he is just completely flattened. It's met the same fate as the other adventurers. Does right that before, right before your eyes? Does that block our 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 way out of here? Or no, oh. no. the The room itself is quite large. You can walk around it. But um, in fact, why don't you guys both make saves for me? Save versus death. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, I got a 15 plus, plus nothing. I got a 16. So good. Very good. You both managed to definitely dodge out of the way uh, of the boulders. And he is the only one unfortunate enough to take the brunt of it. And uh, he certainly did. He is flattened and dead. Sorry, Tim. Wow. Whoa. Oh. And I, I kind of, yeah. <laughs> I, I kinda, yeah. I'm kind of like holding... Uh, my dog back and I'm just are you okay Ayer? yes I'm fine I suppose it it helps to have keen elven sight does it not 
Yes. Wow. That was just so sudden. And then uh, I, I say to him, I don't, I don't suppose it was, it was because he was going to go, uh, going to go tell everybody about these, these creatures. I mean, if he was right about this, you don't, you don't think he's right about the other thing. Where ogres? Yeah. Uh, no, there's no such thing as where ogres. Uh, and he's like in the back of his mind. He's like, God, I hope there's no such thing as where ogres. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and I would be saying the same thing. <laughs> But, uh, wow. Hmm. Yep. And yeah. then I guess, I guess I would be like, I don't suppose that, cause he, he had magic armor, right? Yeah. Yep, and it was, uh, oh, he had magic stuff, didn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How uh, much rocks are on him? Yeah. I was going to say, like, I don't suppose any of that's, any of his stuff is salvageable. So he pretty much was killed from the first boulder. They kind of came down like, <laughs> the first boulder got him on the head and just, <laughs> crushed mm-hmm. him. The second one came down, hit him, and the third one hit the one behind it and then fell over to the side. Uh, so he is there. You might have to push a rock out of the way uh, to get to him, but other than that, you'd be able to, uh, you'd definitely be able to take the chain mail uh, and the mall from him. I'm not so interested in the mall, but I would definitely like the chain mail if it's possible. Yeah, I would definitely give it, I would definitely not fight you over that. Like, <laughs> yeah, and no, I just want to paint like, Jeremy would want to face. share this. <laughs> you had been traveling with him for some time, at least, and so uh, while this was an easy way to expel him from the game, I think for your characters, it would have been a poignant moment of the actual danger you've probably been in this entire time in spite of mm-hmm. your luck um, previously. Mm-hmm. And uh this serves as a hard reminder of the dangers of the profession that you've chosen to, uh, to embark upon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think in my, my sort of overly optimistic, um, you know, view of life, you know, I, I think trying to make jokes about it and all of that, trying to, uh, you know, sort of make light of the situation would be very apparent. Um, but I'm definitely shaken more than I'm trying to let on. Uh, Findelli, uh, after we kind of, you know, ceremoniously strip him down, um, is is his head completely crushed? Uh, yes. Or, all right. Well, then I take two two copper pieces out. Uh, I just like put them on his chest. Uh, uh, good luck on your travels, old friend. Uh, and I get up and I want to get the hell out of here. Uh, so yeah, and I, I, I think like, come on here. maybe before he does that, I would I would hold up um, the sword, and I would you know I would say something along the lines of you know of like you know may the Lord of Lights blessing gu- you know guide you through the dark underworld you know to find peace and glory, um, and you know while we while your light in this world has been extinguished, may it you know burn bright forever in the underworld and then i would say the uh the 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 spell trigger word or whatever silver moon and to let the light go out on my sword um because we don't need it and uh <laughs> and you know kind of as a gesture to and a, and a final farewell to him when you say that word and the, the sword goes out um you spend a few moments just kind of in silence after you've looted the body and, and all these other things but one thing that you notice is that maul that he was carrying, the runes on the so- etched upon the side of it slowly begin to emanate a light bluish color. And you see what looks like what could only be described in your the way you're seeing it um, as maybe soul strings or of some type. Uh, you, but you see this essence transfer from him into the runes of the maul. And the hmm. runes glow brightly for a moment, and then they go out. Oh, well, then in that case, I will definitely go over and pick up the mall. Um, and I would I would look to Vendeli, and I think I would say, you may be more familiar with this type of, of magic than I am, but I will, I will admit, I worry that our friend's soul is trapped somewhere in this in this weapon. 
I hope that he did not somehow become a part of this thing and, and, and is used to feed its power. Have you heard anything, anything about this, this type of thing in your books? Several stories, yes. And uh, you touching it promises that your soul will go to it too when you die. So good luck with that. Uh, yeah, well, we shall see if I've proved if I've proven myself worthy of the Lord of Light. He will not let that happen. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, Findelli's a little bit upset that the joke didn't land for him, but all right. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, I would like to roll uh, to uh, just kind of like to to see if I know anything about this. Yeah. So, uh, like you had mentioned before, it's either an identify spell or. Um, I, my logic behind you being able to identify items has thus far been based off of my experience with Baldur's Gate, whereas the game has it programmed where if your character has identified a, t- a certain type of item a certain number of times, that when they see it, they know what it is innately, and that makes sense to me. Um, you know that this mall was a mall plus two because you rolled high and you were able to identify it. You had experience with malls before, and I let you, I gave you that opportunity to make that roll. I will give you that opportunity again, but it's not going to be the target number in the back of the book. Instead, it's going to be a, a, a little bit higher. I'm probably going to look for a 16 on a uh, on an intelligence check. All right. 12. Okay, yeah, you are unsure of... of... Hmm. It is interesting magic to say the least but uh we can only speculate i'll uh, i'll do some more research if you hold on to it yes i think that would be best oh, and i kind of like pat the, the the head of the mall don't worry if you're in there we'll get you out kordak we uh, we go back to you. You've been at this camp for your best estimation would be you're kind of going in and out of consciousness. They're not feeding you. Um, you know, the things that we had previously discussed have transpired. And uh, your best guess would maybe be four to five days. So uh, there comes a night when uh, you are being slapped around, abused badly. And um, they've painted some kind of paint on you, some ceremonial markings or what have you, and they've built a very large fire in the center of the camp. You are unattended for a moment as the bugbears have uh, taken to the drink and they've got uh, just, the night has has worn on and uh, they've been going kind of savage, just um, eating all the animals they can find. There's loads of fish and all of these things. You take this opportunity. You had been working on your bindings. Um, you take this opportunity to finish what you had started with your bindings and uh, you break free of them. Uh, and you dart into the night after grabbing your effects. Um, you dart into the night uh, for them. Never, uh, you hope never to be seen again. Uh, However, the leg of the journey to get back to Basin Peak, you're not sure where you are. You're not sure how far away you are. You manage to get out into the wilderness where you find a river off in the distance, but you find it. You see it off in the distance, and you know that little river leads right through town. Uh, so you begin trekking through the forest towards that river. Given the legs of the journey, I'm going to roll wandering monster checks for each leg. Uh, It's going to be three legs of the journey. Okay, so the very first leg, um, you are, you've, it's been maybe about an hour, and you're just kind of running. You've, you've stopped for a moment to look around and and put your gear back on because you know these parts of the woods can be dangerous. Um, And you've continued to run. You hear uh, a few twigs snapping, and you find a, uh, a female uh, bugbear who is, collecting berries uh you stop and lock eyes with her what do you do so she sees me she sees you i start walking i guess i'll keep my eyes locked on hers and i'll walk very slowly and carefully kind of not towards her but 
still trying to go in the direction I was going. Okay, she continues to stare at you as you continue to walk by very intently. Uh, you can see her start to unsheathe a dagger on her side, but she's not taking any steps towards you. It, it appears to be purely defensive. All right, so I will keep walking. I guess I'll, if possible, back up some more while still going the way I want to go. As soon um, as you get far enough away, she darts back off towards the camp. You keep going. There's nothing. And the last leg, there is. Okay, this time you find um, a badly injured wolf who is um, just kind of uh, eating at a deer that has been killed. Um, It's got a gash down the side of its face, um, and it looks up at you, and it snarls and charges at you. Roll initiative. Ooh, seven. Okay, you get to act first. It is charging towards you. All right, so which, how far away is it, pretty much? Um, I'm going to say, for the sake of um, a theater of mind, it's one move action away. So well, you can reach it within one move. If it's charging on me, then I'll just walk forward, and I'll try, as it's charging, wind up my mace. And I'm going to try, pretty much, cinematically, run at this thing and just whack it across the snout. All right, go ahead and make your attack roll. Um, 19. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you catch it right in the side of the jaw, right where it already has this big gash down its face. So, five damage. Okay, that almost knocks it right out. Uh, But it does get one opportunity to nip up at you. It rolls a 12. Uh, That misses. Okay, you definitely dodge out of the way. It's your turn. All right, so I swack it, and it looks like it definitely hurt it, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's right. about to collapse. All right, so as it kind of nips at me, I'm just going to say I kind of just, like, bat that away. I just look at it. I kind of, like, well, I'm a dwarf. I lean over as much as I could, and I just snarl back at it. Like, <laughs> I just take the mace. I, I grab my holy symbol for a quick second, and I just bring the mace down. You brush the side of its fur as it sidesteps and tries to bite you in the torso. It bites into your calf, or yeah, into your calf for five points of piercing damage. Your turn. I yell out like, <laughs> shakes your calf. <laughs> oh, is this, it's, it's still locked on. Oh yeah, you might be able to pull out of it. You know, it, it's not nothing mechanically. No, so I'm gonna, with my free hand, I'm gonna grab like the back of its head. I'm going to just take the mace and just try and, like, clock it. Yeah, okay. Sweet. Oh, nat 20. (laughs) All right, it has one hit point left, so what's it look like when you kill it? All right, so I grab it by the back of its head, and I'd say I'll try and pull off, and it just lock on. I just snarl, I take the mace, I smash it into it, and it breaks, like, that top row of teeth on me. I feel it come off. I just take it and slam its head on the ground. When you do that, your hands are covered in the wolf fur. Your one hand is. <laughs> Start looking at oh, for everyone out there, I am a dwarf that is phobic to hair, so I have absolutely no hair on me. Right, so I'm going to take this opportunity to, as you are doing that, um, I gave the other guys an opportunity to tell us a little bit about your character. First, uh, tell me uh, roughly what he looks like, and then give me, um, apart from the hair phobia now, uh, one interesting point from his background that influences his worldview. Oh, well, he grew up, he was born and grew up in a wizard's tower. And for reasons that no one knows, this kind of a civil war broke out in the area. And some dark powers were unleashed and I am haunted by an evil ghost that chases me. Not It's not a daily thing. It seems to actually a lot less frequently than it should, but it still happens. And let's just say because of that in the wizard tower, I am a absolute hygiene freak. I know I'm being blasphemous against the world, but it includes any hair. So I keep a little, I'll say just shave. It's not a weapon, but like a shaving knife that like every half hour, I just start like shaving off everything. So he had, he's short and stocky like a dwarf, but probably first glance, you look at him like, is that a dwarf? Like, huh? He has You're chain mail. He wields a mace. Um, he has a necklace with a holy symbol on it. The, the, how do you say? Caius? Is that? Yes. Okay. So the symbol of Caius. 
just got a backpack. You can see like a sleeping, like a blanket sticking out of it. The hairlessness and the holy symbol are the only like really unique things to yeah, them. People have definitely mistaken you for a halfling many, plenty of times. Probably, yeah. Okay, so um, back to Findeli and Iyer. Um, you guys finally make it back to Basin Peak, and it's been maybe two days um, of basically celebration because fishermen can go out, come back. You've tasted some of the best fish you've ever had in your life. Um, Finn, you've had some more time to study this mace. Um, give me another intelligence check. This time I'll reduce the difficulty to the standard of the chart, which is a 14 for level 6. Got an 18. Fantastic. Um, it is indeed now a mall plus 3. Whoa. After having absorbed the energy... Uh, from or the life es- f- essence, you're not a hundred percent sure if it, it actually absorbed a soul or if it just absorbed like kinetic life energy. You know, you're not a hundred percent sure what it was. It's not necessarily your your wheelhouse, but it is a mall plus three, um, to be sure. So, um, yeah, it's been a few days. You've been partying up at Basin Peak, and uh, fish is great. Everything's great um, until that third day. When uh, you guys are probably waking up, uh, headed over to the hog hole, maybe you're um, uh, speaking with the al- alchemist um, or uh, getting armor repaired, or like, like just going about your daily business. You're not, you know, you're not going to be here forever, but you've definitely been enjoying the the fact that you've completed a quest, you worked hard at it, you lost a friend, but you know what? You're going to party hard, and it's been it's been a good time. When all of a sudden this haggard looking bald halfling or dwarf you're not sure comes stumbling into town and collapses at the threshold of the of the town um he's brought in he's uh grunting (laughs) yeah yeah he's brought in and uh instantly taken over to um the the medical facility that's there in basin peak Uh, from what you could tell he was definitely an adventurer um, Kordak, you have finally made it back to Basin Peak. We will we'll go forward from here. So let's say um, I want to kick it over to Findeli. What's your reaction to uh, seeing this this armor clad uh, being come stumbling into town, half dead? Kind of like nudge there. Uh, it seems like another adventure. I had a hard time out there on the in the open wilds. And I, I would kind of look over, you know, like squinty and whatever, because I, I feel like we've been carousing and enjoying drink, um, mm-hmm. especially in, in Jeremy's honor. And uh, I would kind of squint one eye and then the other, look, kind of looking at this creature, you know, whatever this is. And I'm like, ah, oh, you're right. That that might just be the ugliest halfling I've ever seen. I I, I mean, he's he's... He's strong for his his kind, I would imagine, but I don't think he's a halfling. I got a silver piece as a gnome, a large gnome. Let's go find out. And then I, I'm I kind of pull out my uh, my pouch again and, and look into it and kind of dump it out on the table. And I, I don't know. Pre- correct me if I'm wrong, but perhaps we've been getting free drinks and and whatever this whole Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and report. actually, you, you've received, it's not going to be significant unless we play a third session, which would be great, but um, the money at this point is not going to be significant. Let's assume you've received a reward. Okay. Um, you've been well rewarded for your efforts. Uh, you've gotten very well taken care of. Yeah. Okay. Well, then in, in that case, um, I will probably have secured some sort of... Um, chest or 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 lockbox of some kind um to have secured that because i never have any possessions that are worth anything um so the gesture will remain the same i i just i don't keep very many coins in a pouch and so i'm like you uh, be like i will take that bet however Hmm. this is not going to be like the last bet those were not goblins (laughs) they they weren't goblins (laughs) I uh, make a high low d6 roll for me. Alrighty. Uh hi. Okay, as you were looking, um actually no. I was looking for a one, two, or three. So never mind. Uh, okay. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um as you guys go and uh, you kind of investigate what the heck is going on with this dwarf, um 
Ayer, one of the things that you notice now is this emblem that he's wearing on his chest is the same uh, emblem of your god, Caius. Awesome. Um, and so with that, I, I would motion to Findeli and is sort of the the stumbling and the, the, the fog in my eyes is cleared a little bit and I'm like, ah... Look at that. The Lord of Light has provided for us in our time of need. He took one friend, but maybe provided another to us. And I, I will point to the holy symbol. Um, I will say, although halflings or gnomes, they don't, they're not usually known to the ways of the, the Lord of the Light. Kordak, you are conscious, by the way. <laughs> okay, I'm conscious at this point. Yeah. Do I hear this conversation? Yep. These petulant I elves. Bloody gnome! Bloody halfling either. Oh! I kind of, I kind of like sit up, like, like do this. Oh, here's like back crack. At least I can the, speak. Uh, not the bloody halfling or gnome. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Finbelli. Uh Who might you be, sir? I am. Kordak. What might you be? Well, I am. I'm a dwarf. And at that, I would, I would start to laugh, and I'm like, nah. Point no. Of way, course. He Don't can't. Laugh. Wait. Don't. I, I do not mean to be rude, but you, you I cannot know. be a dwarf. I've seen dwarves, and they have beards. Mm, I know. Very large beards. I know. I don't think. Uh, I, I don't like hair. Just leave it at that. Excuse me, uh, Air, uh, just remind me, is it, uh, I don't think legally you can be a dwarf without a beard, right? I have heard that before, too. <laughs> I would actually pull out my belt pouch, and I would pull, fish a silver coin out, and I would give it to him. <laughs> and uh, I would be like, you're right, he's a gnome. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, friend, here. Uh, why don't you come with us, Kordak? You seem like you've had a rough day, a rough few days. Why don't you come in? We'll get you some uh, something to drink and eat, yeah? Yes. Trying to solve this fishing problem. We already got yeah, that cool. solved, sir. I don't, just relax. <laughs> you could calm down. <sighs> and, and as you do that, I would kind of come up to you and, and, you know, kind of pat my hand on your shoulder and have this big grin on my face and be like, this is an auspicious day. Kordak, uh, I and then I would kind of look over to Finn, um, and I would say, it, and then I would look back to you, and I'd be like, if you truly are a, a dwarf, then it shows that the Lord of Light shines even in the darkest places under the ground. So you worship Kai's too, and I, I would I would sort of look at you and I'd be like, yes, yes, he. He has been known to have that moniker. Yes, I do. Wow. I hold up my emblem. <sighs> it's good to hear. Let's just say I channel some of their uh, divine powers. I don't preach. Not that kind of priest. And my eyes get wide in excitement when you say you channel those powers. And I say, and then I, I would look again over to Finn and I'd be like, I told you I'm lucky. This is lucky indeed. We have a true devout follower. Finally. Not like... Well, you know. Yes. Usually no, luck uh, is not involved with me at all. No, no, no. No, no. I, 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 I misspoke. Sorry. I'm the lucky one. Ah. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find out if you stick with us. Hey, now there's two of you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not believe in Caius? As they look to the other elf. Clearly, I believe in Caius. You both gain power from him. I just, to be frank, <clears throat> don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would look to him and I say, don't worry, friend. This, this is an argument best had over ale. Lots of ale. Ale is much appreciated. <laughs> yes. And look, I got this nice shiny silver piece uh, that'll clear, that'll pay for several ales. <laughs> And Once again, I, you just kind of hear him go like. 
And I think maybe like as we're walking back to the t- I'm I'm assuming he could walk. walk. Kind of like grunts at everything and like. <laughs> yep. Did, Kordak, did you, um, did you as say you ogre? Three make you as you three make your way um, to the bar. Uh, you know, some time has passed uh, at least because the the medical personnel were were going to probably uh you know patch up your gash wounds and, and stuff like that. You probably would have waited for that to 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 oh. finish and, and then uh, or not. So did I heal any? <laughs> well, I mean, um, we just offered him ale. Like I don't know that he would wait <laughs> if he truly true. is a dwarf. Um, wait, wait, does yeah. ale not heal dwarves? You're going to go ahead and heal for. Say. Six hit points from the aid given from the uh, from the people there, and then if of course if you've prepared any um, curing spells, uh, you can go ahead and cast them now. As I'll just tell you that uh, this day is going to go on uneventful, so saving the spell would not um, so give any benefit. Then yes, as I wake up, as um, we go onwards towards ale, I will start chanting in Dwarven, I kind of twirl my fingers, and this yellow energy comes off and kind of just circles around me. Um, and any obvious wounds you would have seen, you see some of them like like patch up. Yeah, that's 1d6 plus 1. Oh, wow. I rolled max, so I am almost at full. Word. I think maybe like as that's happening, like he's walking behind us, maybe because obviously he's got shorter legs and because he was he was injured. Um, but I think as he starts chanting in dwarvish and, and casting the spell, like my my body would tense and stiffen a little bit. Um, and I think you would see like the hair on the back of my neck or something stand up. Um, in fact, I think maybe my ha- the my you know sort of long elven hair would kind of like be rippling a little bit in some response to this um, to this magic, and I, oh. I wonder if he'll notice it. If you had rippling hair, I'd be walking a little further back then. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. Caleb Kordak, make a one d six roll for me. <laughs> I rolled a one. You notice it. It was a search check. The equivalent of a perception check, uh, basically. Dave versus paralysis. <laughs> All right, so I finish my um, spell, and I, I so I saw so I saw him like tense up. Yeah. Got you spooked there. And I would turn around, and uh, you probably see like the tail end of the magic kind of wear off. Yeah, and I would I would say, oh. No, not at all. It is it is just that I've never seen a devout follower of the Lord of Light be able to wield his his boons as you have. I I've been granted some benefits from the Lord of Light, but nothing like that. It is truly an honor to be in your presence. Caius can bless with uh, some wonderful gifts. Is Caius a male or female deity? Um, you have always seen him as a male. Male, deity. okay. Um, Iyer might see him differently, um, but he is typically referred to as a he. It's a male, okay. Uh, so it's I, um, not unheard of for people um, in different air regions of the land to refer to gods um, as as different genders. You know, you wouldn't necessarily be holy and uh, offended if somebody referred to Caius as a woman. You know, okay. uh, maybe. So yeah. So I'll say, uh, Caius can give many gifts, but kind of like look up and I kind of do like doesn't always listen to my prayers yes well and I, I grab the uh, holy symbol and I kind of mutter something in dwarven <laughs> and um yeah my I, okay my 14 intelligence perhaps I know a little bit of dwarven and uh I but I I would I would respond back in a in a in a poor uh dwarven um, and he says, I would say, he may not always listen to your prayers, but clearly he has, you have proven yourself worthy in his eyes. Ah, not a language of my people. I, and then, uh, this is now where I'm convinced that, that you're a dwarf. Um, and I, I would just nod and then I would look over to Findeli and, uh, I would be like, 
No, nah, he's, he he's a dwarf. Give he me that coin well. back. He may not look at all like a dwarf. He acts yeah. very dwarfish. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, no gnome would would speak with an accent like that, especially not in dwarfish. And I, I would, and I would be serious. I'd be like, give me that coin back. Did you have a bet that I was a gnome? I flip the the silver piece back to to air. Uh, I bet you were a gnome. He said you were a halfling. You can decide which one's worse. Uh, that's what I will come to. <laughs> mm, that's a bet. <sighs> anyway, let's get some mail. So, um, uh, Findeli and Iyer, um, as far as your hit points, you have regained, you've been resting for three days, you have regained three hit points from uh, wherever you were at previously. Ah, excellent. Uh, and with that, you guys make your way over to the hog hole. Um, Kordak, recent events are weighing on you, and um, something they said is now irking at you. They had mentioned that they had, kind of offhandedly, they mentioned that they had solved the fish problem. And uh, you might want to go ahead and bring that up, because I think I feel that that's something Kordak might have an opinion yes. about. The bar is the proof. Well, I got offended that they thought I was a half thing. I know him, but... <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> now that that's solved. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we are so, in the bar. So at the, hog, the, the hog drink. hole? The hog hole, yep. All right. So I asked for the biggest cup they have, the biggest stein of ale. And there are people that are coming up to you being like, Kordak, Kordak, are you okay? And they're trying to strike up conversation with you. Um, they know you're kind of standoffish, so uh, nobody presses too much if you don't respond. But if you do respond, then they carry a short conversation with you, um, express that they are glad that you're alive, um, and that uh, you know they, they look forward to hearing about what you went through. Most of my responses as people is probably like, a, <clears throat> yes, I'm alive. Let me drink. Yeah. And so, like, and most of the bar patrons, I don't, well, I mean, I guess the way he talks, he sounds kind of brusque, but he's just trying to keep, like, just drinking. He doesn't want to get, like, bothered by all these people at the moment. So I'll turn to, I guess, whoever's sitting next to me. If my ears still work, <laughs> I thought I heard you said you solved the fishing problem. What was it? Well, I'll tell you what it was not. It was not a were ogre. They do not exist. The mall bloody were ogre with you, Iyer. You feel it pulse with a little bit of energy when you say that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm like, but we, th there was a cave a, a, a little ways down uh, the the river, and there was a well, a giant bugbear uh, clan, actually, or not a cl uh, sorry, an owl bear. There were bugbears there, but they seemed cowed or subservient to this Bug thing. Bugbears. Yes. That's... Mm, got waylaid by bugbears. They brought me to a cave. Now, Nate, side note, do I know what that big creature was? Um. So, they, they had brought you to a campsite out in the middle of the oh, woods. Oh, campsite, okay. Yes, you are aware of what the creature was, who he was referred to as. And I forgot one really important detail because I got so excited about killing uh, Jeremy off. Um, <laughs> as you guys were leaving, if you remember, there was the owl bear room, but then there was the room beside that that had all of the bugbears inside there. As you passed back through that room, um, one of the things that you noticed was one bugbear in particular, a, one, a woman bugbear who had uh, several children around her, and uh, she struck you as different. She would not stop staring at you the entire way out and kind of might have creeped you out. Um, and again, I meant to include this. Um, and she was wearing some type of headdress that was different from every other bugbear that was, that was in that cave. So she was markedly different, but you just kind of like, oh, okay, that's kind of weird, and then you left. Mm -hmm. So... Back to the bar. Yeah, and so I, I think I would mention, um, and I, I would say something along the lines of, it it seems as though this cave may have once been an ancient temple to a dark god. And, well, it, the stories have never said much about bugbear culture, but the 
I per, perhaps she was a, a priestess or a chieftain of some kind, but as we were leaving, there was one dressed unlike the others. She had a headdress. Indeed, she did. Mm-hmm. Oh, I had a bone to pick with her. You you know her? Or I, I was hogtied up at some campsite eat me but there's a campsite with all these bugbears and there was a giant there I was being offered as the next meal for this giant there was some type and I had mm, bastards knew I was a holy man they heal up his arm he had some giant gash in it there was a shaman there that I take a sip to try and regain his memory yes this giant was called Zorvik that's who they called him. This uh, shaman was giving him some potions that this female in the headdress would bring the shaman these potions. Exactly sure what they did to him, but a mean sucker. He's going to eat me. Kordak, you noticed that the way when he would take these potions, he would go off and hunt. Um, and he would come back with some seriously like formidable game as it were uh, you know he would he would slay like a a pack of dire wolves um or or something to that effect uh and you would see the effects of this potion on him it would appear to by your eyes to make him just indomitable all right well the last oh last day last night i was there took that potion he came back he had about five dire wolves slung over his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Let's just say that mm-hmm. boosted him up somehow. Speaking of dire wolves, he had a pet one too. You've gathered he used to, a. He used to feed him the scraps. A crowd listening to your story now. Make a charisma check. Me make a charisma check? Oh boy. Yes, please. Eight. What is it? Eight. Eight. Um, so in your mind, you're telling this epic story, uh, but to the people who are listening, um, it, st- it doesn't sound, it just sounds like gritty and like, it's just like bullet points. <laughs> yeah. People are not very interested in, they just like, you're, you keep giving like a sliver of a fact, like, oh, there's a new point of information, but then you kind of talk about like how you felt about it. And, and so, uh, as you go on, it just kind of, people start to kind of fade away. They're like, yeah, it's taking forever to get any information on this guy. And then I, um, I'll just detail, just to save time now, detail how I escaped and actually, wait, that bugbear encounter with force, did that one have a headdress? No. Okay. So I ran a foul. I got away from a bugbear, killed a wolf, and ended up here passed out on your gates that was four or five days ago i would be the like and i don't know maybe finn Findelli would have noticed it but as soon as you said giant my eyes sort of got wide and i'm looking down into my mug of ale um and i like i didn't hear anything you said after <laughs> after giant um and then uh and then i, I look over i kind of look at you and i blink kind of coming back to reality and i look over to Findelli and i say did he say giant? <laughs> I, uh... Findelli will... Yeah. Yeah, Findelli's gonna basically, like, grab your shoulder and, like, move you over a couple bar stools over. <laughs> and be like, you know, sidebar. Uh, he said giant. Um, I think, personally... I know it might go against your code of ethics, uh, being a servant of the light, God, uh, that we should run for our lives. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of look and, and I say, well, I don't think ogres exist, but I'm pretty sure giants do. And uh, and I, I'm kind of warring with with is sort of internally here, right? Because I'm looking over at Kordak and, and, and I start to mutter like, 
Ah, but the the light, the Lord of Light, would not have provided us with with a a person such as this if he did not have a plan. But his plan is for us to get smushed. <laughs> no, no, it we. But I don't want to face a giant. I mean, you th- you think he's telling the truth? Hmm, that's a good question. I didn't think about that. It could just be a drunk o- a dwarf. Just for you to see him down like a big cup of <laughs> ale, slap it down more. We saw the giant collar, and leash. Yeah. So something large has to control. Well, had controlled that. And we saw some, I mean, that creature was strange in and of itself. What's to say that a giant doesn't exist, yeah? I mean, I do magic, like. (laughs) Yes, but magic we have seen, magic, although I don't understand it, I, I understand that it is, it is granted or, or in your case, you unlock the secrets from those books that you read, but a giant and then I kind of like come come to and I'm like no no listen the Lord of Light would not have put this test in front of us if he did not think that we could we could pass it no we must we must talk to the to the and I hesitate the, the dwarf and <laughs> find out where this thing is P- perhaps perhaps there's opportunity here okay you're my friend. I've known you for a long time. Um, so I will help you. But I promise you, if things go very badly, we're leaving. <laughs> yes, of course, but nothing's going to go wrong. I, I, what could go wrong? We have the light on our side. Yes, that's what Jeremy thought, too. And I head over to Kordak. <laughs> And a couple steps behind, and I would be like, and kind of under my breath as I'm heading back, I'd be like, yeah, but but humans, they're they're foolish and smelly. I put my hand up. I'm like, I'm ordering a whole bottle of wine. I'm going to need it. (laughs) Uh, Point of order, Findeli, you you gained, as your sixth level, you gained one extra first level spell and one extra third level spell. As per the way we have done it before, um, you are kind of learning things from your book. We're going to roll those spells right now to see what you get. Oh, cool. So go ahead and roll 1d12 to see what extra first level spell you get. You go ahead. Yeah. I got a three. So you gain the floating disc spell. You unlock that from your book. Floating. Oh, yeah. That is one of the most useful spells, in my opinion, in the whole damn game. So Um, I love that spell. What was the other level? A third level spell. Got a four. Fireball. Holy shit. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) My very first damage spell. Okay. Um, yes, this uh, this conversation goes on for a little while longer before it pitters out. The day comes to a close. Um, you will all gain one more hit point for resting uh, for the evening. Kordak, you can choose in the morning to pray and uh, realign your spells if you so choose, or you keep them the way they are now.